Good morning, New Hope. My name is Pastor Zach. I'm one of the youth pastors here at New Hope, and I'm so honored to be sharing with you this morning in our Red Letters series. If you have your Bible, you can go ahead and turn to John chapter 10. That's where we'll be reading. And you can also put a, a marker, put your finger in Psalm 23. We'll be jumping there here soon. But John chapter 10, we're looking at the good shepherd. Starting in verse 11, it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But verse 14 says this, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Today I want to look at how Jesus is our good shepherd. And this is not just looking at something that he said or something that he did, but this is looking at who he is right now for us. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to share this morning. I thank you that that we can be in your word freely. God, I pray for every person listening here this morning, whether it's Sunday morning or Monday afternoon, whether they're in their living room or in their car. God, I pray that you would speak something new to us. Open up our ears, open up our hearts. We're, We're here to receive from you this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. In John chapter 10, uh, we see two things that Jesus says. We see what, what we just read, that he is the good shepherd. And before that, if you were to go back and read, we see uh, him say that he is the door. We're not going to go too in-depth on that this morning, but I love this idea that Jesus is the door. He is our access point. And that's great that we don't have to be at church. We don't have to be in a building. You can be in your house. You can be in your living room, in your kitchen. You can be in the bathroom. You can be in your car. You can be in a cubicle at work, and you have access to God. He is with you. Anybody thankful that we have access to God wherever we're at? Whether you're on your couch, turn to someone next to you in the chat, write, I have access. I have access to God. We're thankful we have access. But as we read in John 10, we see that Jesus is the door. And we see another character, and it is the thief. And we know the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And how many know that that you can have a door, but that doesn't stop a thief from coming in? There is an enemy, and the enemy is out to get you. And we need to live a life prepared for that thief to come. When we live a life prepared, our life looks different. When I know that there's a thief coming, I don't have time for petty things. I don't have time to be mad at you. I don't have time to hold a grudge. I don't have time to play games with my faith. There's a thief coming. There's someone trying to kill me. I live differently. Knowing that there's a thief coming, that, that can be scary. And, and, and that can be, uh, seem like bad news. And, but, but before you question, God, why is there a thief coming? God, why, why did you allow the thief? I want you to remember, yeah, there may be a thief coming, but there's also a shepherd coming. There's a shepherd coming, and his name is Jesus, and he never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He walks with you, and we see as we read that Jesus isn't just any shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd, so what's the difference between just any shepherd and and a good shepherd, Uh, and, and he tells us at the beginning, he says, I'm not just some hired hand. Rather, I own the sheep. Now, this is really an easy concept for us to understand. How many know that when you rent something, you treat it differently than something you own. Anybody ever rent a car before, right? I don't know about you, but there's never been a time that I've rented a car and taken it through a car wash. I could care less what it looks like when I return it. Why is it that when we rent a car, all of a sudden we're driving like we're some sort of NASCAR driver? Like I'm trying to see how fast I can get off the blocks at at the red light going to green. I'm I'm driving it very differently than my truck that I own. We, We treat something differently when we rent it. But Jesus, he says here, I'm not a hired hand. I'm I'm not just renting the sheep. I own the sheep. I created these sheep. I'm not some sort of help. I I know them. I've named them. I know them by name. I have a plan for them, a plan to prosper them, not to harm them. He's saying, you can trust me. I am a good shepherd. I am a good shepherd. So we know that there's a thief coming, and it's not a question of, of if the thief is coming. It's more of a question of when is the thief coming. 
But we have to remember that although there's a thief coming, we have a good shepherd, and the shepherd, he walks with us all throughout the path. So what does a shepherd do for us? This morning, I want to provide three different ways, three different things that a a shepherd provides for us. And the first thing is this. A shepherd provides direction. Turn to your neighbor and say, direction. A shepherd leads us. A shepherd guides us. Uh, they, they, They guide the sheep. They guide the sheep where to go. They guide the sheep uh, for what to eat, for where to sleep. The, the shepherd directs the sheep everywhere. And why? why? Maybe you're asking, like, why does the shepherd have to direct them everywhere? Funny you ask. Well, in this story, we see three different characters. We see the thief who's coming to steal, kill, and destroy, and that's Satan. We see the shepherd, that's Jesus, and we see the sheep, that's us. Now, I wish that this was something to encourage you, something to be like, yeah, we're a bunch of sheep, but really, that's not the best news. If you look into it, sheep are actually very dumb. They're, we're, we're dumb. We're, they're, they're very stupid. Not only are sheep stupid, but they're stubborn. Like, it's one thing to be stupid. You can get by with that. But to be stupid and stubborn, that's, that's some bad news right there. We also see that sheep, they have bad eyesight. Uh, sheep, they will eat anything that's in front of them. Like, you put them in a pasture, they're going to eat all the grass until all the grass is gone, and then they're going to keep eating. They're going to eat the dirt. They're going to eat the droppings from other animals. They're just going to keep going. They will follow each other off a cliff. They are very dumb animals. And, and here in the Bible it says, we are a bunch of sheep. So let's just take an altar call right now. Thank you, Jesus, that we're a bunch of sheep. But, but we see that, that we're a bunch of sheep. And just like sheep, we need a shepherd. I need a shepherd. You need a shepherd. We need a shepherd to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. Why? Because otherwise we indulge our flesh. Otherwise we eat till we drop. Otherwise we continually make mistakes. Without direction, we die. This is what sin does to us. And when, when we look at John 10, I love to also look at Psalm 23 to, to look at what the good shepherd does for us. And in Psalm 23, starting in verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. I lack nothing. Somebody needs to hear that today, that you lack nothing. You have everything you need to fulfill the call that God has put on your life. You lack nothing. You are enough. You are enough. You have everything that you need to fulfill the call of God on your life. Some of you right now, maybe you're feeling the pressure to perform, the pressure to to do whatever it is you're doing, to do it perfectly. But hear me, if it's God's will for you to do that thing, the pressure is not on you. The pressure is on God. God called you there. God will lead you. He'll direct you. All you have to do is follow. Following is easy. He's breaking the the wind. He's making it easy for you to follow. But here's the deal. God does not lead those who want to direct their own lives. God doesn't lead those who want to direct their own lives. If you want God to lead you, you have to submit your will over to his will. You have to say, God, it's not my will. God, I'm not doing what I want to do. God, I will follow you. I I will do whatever it is that you call me to do. You have to recognize, I'm a sheep. I need a shepherd. I need someone to guide me. So we see a good shepherd. First, they provide direction. And the second thing that a shepherd provides is correction. Direction, correction. And correction is something that a lot of people don't love. It's something we don't, I don't, a lot of people don't like to be corrected. They don't like to be told that they did something wrong. And in Luke 15, Jesus is telling a parable and he talks about a hundred sheep. He says, one of the sheep, get away. Just like sheep, so many of us, we like to wander. We, we, like, we like to be stubborn, and we're, we're stupid, and we're stubborn. We like to do things our own way. We like to go wherever we want to do, go wherever we want to go, do whatever we want to do. And the Bible says that Jesus leaves the 99 to find the one. This is good news. Turn around and say, that's good news, that he leaves the 99 to find the one. You serve a God who, when you wander off, when you doubt, when you question, when you walk away from your faith, he goes chasing after you. He searches for you, and he brings you back. And he doesn't bring you back and just punish you, but it says he throws a party, that there's a party that happens, that because what was lost is now found. You have a good shepherd, and he's chasing you down so that you can be with him. And Jesus isn't just saying, this is what I do. He's saying, this is who I am. Wherever you go, I'm going with you. I'm chasing you down. 
I, I'm, I'm going to find you. I'm, I'm going to bring you back. What was lost is now found. Continue reading in Psalm 23, verse 4. It says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The Bible says that you go through the valley. You go through the valley. That means that you don't stop in the valley. That means that you don't hang out in the valley. That means that you don't get married in the valley. You walk through the valley. You keep on moving. You're go- Maybe you're in a place right now in your life, and you're going through a valley. You're going through a tough season right now. Well, hear me. Don't stop moving. Keep moving. You're, you got to move through the valley. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. Just keep moving. Get through that valley. It says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. A shepherd, this time, would, would carry two different things. A shepherd would carry a rod, and the shepherd would carry a staff. And the staff, it would have this, this curved end, and this was in case a sheep would, would, would wander off, and the shepherd could hook the sheep and pull them back in. Now, when I'm thinking about this, I would think, you know, if there was this, this staff that I get hooked around the neck with, that that would hurt for a moment. But then after the hurt for a moment, you are right next to the shepherd. The, the, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. Hear me, godly correction doesn't hurt you, it comforts you. Godly correction, it does not hurt you, it should comfort you. And when we understand that the shepherd is for us, that he loves us, that he's chasing us down, that he doesn't want harm to come our way, you start to realize that godly correction comes from the right place. That it's not to hurt you, it's to comfort you. Correction, I heard, I heard this, this quote said the other day, correction is only unwanted when you love your mistake. I'll say that again, correction is only unwanted when you love your your mistake. People who don't want correction are people who love their mistake more. And that thing that you're chasing after, maybe you think, that's going to fulfill my heart, but really it's breaking God's heart. And whatever breaks God's heart will never, ever fulfill your heart. Correction is only unwanted when you love your mistake. I want to hear something crazy that shepherds do. If a sheep wanders off too many times, if, it, if it's too many times that they keep wandering off, the shepherd will go and he'll find the sheep and he will break the sheep's legs. He, he will break the legs, and then he will carry the sheep until the sheep is good to walk again. And the sheep, they say that the sheep will then never leave the side of the shepherd. This makes me think of uh, like a Sunday school picture of Jesus with the long flowing hair, and he's got the little lamb over his shoulders, and everyone's like, oh my goodness. He's just so beautiful that he just loves that lamb so much, and he's just carrying the lamb and taking care of him. No, really? Jesus probably just broke the lamb's legs and the lamb can't walk, right? But he's saying, hey, you've wandered off too many times. I'm gonna make it so that this is gonna hurt for a moment. Your legs are gonna be broken. Here, I don't want my legs to be broken, but I would way rather have my legs broken than to lose my soul. Jesus, he goes and he says, I'm gonna correct you so that you stay right with me. Correction, it might be uncomfortable for a minute, but I promise you it's gonna be better in the long run. He provides correction for us. Correction so that we can be with him. Correction so that we can fulfill the destiny that he's called us to do. So we see a good shepherd provides direction. They provide correction. And the third thing is a a good shepherd provides protection. Psalm 23 in verse 5 says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Have you ever seen those pictures or those videos of someone like holding a cobra and they're like, taming the cobra and it's like dancing and it's terrifying because snakes are horrible creatures and like they could just come and bite the person's face at any time and it, it, it seems like, it, wow, that is so, they are so brave that they would just have this snake that could kill them. Well, I was looking into it and I actually found that there are some people who are frauds that do this who just super glue the snake's mouth shut. So while it looks really cool, like, oh man, they're so brave. No, that snake's mouth is glued shut. So now whatever they do, like it can look scary, but that snake ha- cannot do anything. They can come face to face with their enemy. They can come face to face with danger. But that cobra, that snake, it's lost all its power. This is what the gospel does. This is what the gospel, this is what Jesus does. He, he goes in and he glues the enemy's mouth shut. Turn to your neighbor and say this, God is my protector. He is my protector. He provides protection for me. Continue reading in Psalms. It says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell 
in the house of the Lord forever. God's house provides protection. It provides protection. David says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The staff was for for correction. The rod was for protection against a wolf, against a thief, against the robber. He, he, He provided protection and he provided correction. He was the protector of the sheep. Jesus says, I'm not a hired hand. I'm not going to run away when when bad things come. I'm not going to run away when it gets dangerous. I own these sheep. I am willing to lay my life down for these sheep. In fact, I'm going to give my life up for these sheep. No one can take my life, but I gladly give it up. And I'm so powerful that I'm going to give it up, and then I'm going to take it back again. I'm going to take my life back again. Jesus, he flipped the script. He he changed everything around. You see, under the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, they would have to sacrifice the sheep. The shepherd would have to make a sacrifice of a sheep, of an animal. But Jesus says, no, the, the, the shepherd does not sacrifice the sheep, but rather the shepherd sacrifices himself for the sheep. Rather than us sacrificing an animal to be right with God, God came, Jesus came, and he sacrificed himself so that we could be made right with God. He is our, 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 our shepherd, and he's died for us. He, he flipped the script. And you see, these ideas that, that a good shepherd would give direction, a good shepherd would give correction and protection, those are, those are exciting things. Those are motivating things like, oh, God's going to direct me. He's going he's to di- correct me and get me back online, and he's going to protect me against anything that comes. Those are all motivating, but those mean nothing without the resurrection. The direction, the correction, the protection mean nothing without a resurrection. Let me remind you today that you serve a God who went and died on a cross, laid his life down, freely gave up his life for you and me, and he was buried. And three days later, he rose again, taking his life back so that today we don't serve a God who's dead, but we serve a God who is alive. That, that it's not just a shepherd back in Bible times that provided those things. It's a shepherd that today will, will provide direction, will provide correction and protection for you. He is alive today, and he is resurrected, and he has more for you. He's chasing you down. There's a there's hundred sheep, and he leaves the 99 to find the one, and you've been wandering around, and he's coming in to bring you back in with the family. He's saying, I've got more for you. I've got more than what you're experiencing right now. There's more for you. So today, if that's you, as we prepare to close today, and you say, I've been, I've been away from Jesus, and maybe you've been one, run, running, and you've been wandering, and you're far away from Jesus, but today you recognize, I'm a sheep and I'm in need of a shepherd. I'm a sheep. I need someone to direct me. I need someone to protect me. And you say, today I want to give my life over to God, giving him full control, saying, Jesus, wherever you tell me to go, I'll go. Whatever you tell me to do, I will do. If that's you today, wherever you're at, in your living room, in your car, at work, I just want you to respond saying, that's me. Maybe it's raising your hand. This is just between you and God. Obviously, I can't see how you're responding but I, I know that, that God's there and I know that he's listening. And this is just an outward expression of an inward decision, saying, God, that's me. I give you my life today. Maybe today as you're listening and you're looking at your own life, you recognize that you need a shepherd in your life. Maybe it's in direction. Like you need God to, to show you what path to go down. Maybe it's in correction. You've been doing things that you shouldn't and God's gonna correct you and get you back on the path. Maybe it's protection, trusting that God will protect you. Maybe you've gone through some things in life. You're saying, why wasn't God there? Why didn't he protect me before? Well, I want you to look back at your life. And I think as you look back, you'll see that God has been faithful, that God has protected you from things, that God's corrected you at times, that God's directed you to where you are today. And he's pointing you back in the right direction. And and today he's calling you back saying, I've got more for you. So if that's you and, and you're responding saying, I need direction, I need uh, protection, I need cor- correction, I just want you to, wherever you're at, just raise your hand and say, God, that's me. And just begin to tell God in your life, where in your life do you need those, that help in those areas? If that's you and you're responding to one of these areas, we want you to know that we are so glad you've responded. And, and we've got some steps for you here in just a minute. But I want to just pray with you and know that you can contact me, know that you can call us at any time, and we'll walk you through uh, what, what, what is next in your walk with God. Jesus, I thank you for every person who's listening right now, God, that they aren't here on accident, that they didn't click on this video on accident, God, but you have more for them. God, I thank you that you are our good shepherd, that we can trust in you, that, that you have more for us, that you, that you don't want the thief to come and, and steal, kill, and destroy us, but you have more for us. And I thank you that we have more to hope for for the future. 
I thank you for those who have responded today, accepting you into their life, that heaven's throwing a party for them, that they have come back. And for those who have responded saying, I need the good shepherd in this area, God, I pray that we would walk in those steps that you're directing us. We love you and we thank you. In your name we pray, amen.